That's probably Stop being else a twat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is it like a, a niche and a niche thing like it is here? Or is it for you, is it a, a, a twat versus a twat? A twat. <laughs> yeah, niche, niche and niching. Um, I and think twat it's like, and twats. <laughs> twat and twats, yeah. But I think because you guys say aluminum, don't you? Aluminum, yeah. Aluminium. Yeah, we, yeah aluminium, yeah. Like, where yeah, the fuck I mean, is aluminium coming from? What like, the fuck is aluminum? The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, we break down the art of healthy hustling, overcoming the inner critic, and growing your creative business. PC family, today I'm joined by one of the new homies I've linked up with in 2020, James Martin, aka Made by James, at a period between the Made and the James. Welcome to the Perspective Podcast. I'm stoked to finally get you on the show. How you doing, man? Mr. Russell, I am delightful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah, life, life is good. Good, good, good. And, and we were kind of talking before, this is some stuff we get into, just you know, kind of getting to know each other's backstories, because this is our first official conversation outside of like Instagram DMs. But sure. basically, like, life isn't always what it seems from the outside looking in when people just paint these perfect portrayals a facade of how they live so like immediately you and me can just get into some real shit <laughs> so deep it, yeah it's yeah. some deep shit like right within the first there's there was no surface level conversation within yeah. five minutes of us chatting and i think that's you know that, that let's carry that over to today oh sure yeah of course i mean yeah but we talk about the real stuff not the fake stuff yes perfect and i think that's what people want to hear so for those yeah. listening who may not know about you Give us just a brief scoop about who you are and what you do, my man. So, yeah, for anybody that doesn't know me, firstly, hello. Uh, my name's James Martin. Um, a lot of people may know me on Instagram as Made by James, like you said, period, period. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm, I've got a design agency on the south coast of the UK called Baby Giant Design Co., um, where we do all sorts of weird and wonderful things all the way from web to branding. But I personally have kind of started to specialize and niche down, whatever you want to call it, um, into logo design. And that's kind of where my bag is. That's kind of my day day in, day out job, so to speak, uh, which I absolutely freaking love. So, um, yeah, as I said, nothing to complain about. Life is good. And, and I, I've read some of your interviews and seen some of your other kind of feature things, and they nerd out about the whole logo process and this and that. And I'm going to decide not to do that today because I want to like show the real human behind the work of things. So well, let's, let's talk about that roller coaster road that has led to where you are today. And I want to talk here in a second too about like uh, your process and the way you capture your thoughts and showcase it. But you know, what has led you to where you are of niching, niching down into being like that go-to analog handcrafted logo guy. You know, what's yeah, the road? It's, yeah. It's good. So being a, to be fair, I mean, this is not a place that I ever expected to be. Um, where I, did I, you I was expect all, to be? I don't, I have no fucking idea where I expected <laughs> to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, you know, as a youngster, uh, so obviously I kind of grew up as an artist, um, as a creative, you know, I was always on the arty side. I was never particularly bright. So I was more of that kind of, I didn't say not bright, you know, because you know, I can draw, I can do all these other things. But obviously when I was growing up, you know, I'm 36 now, when I was, you know, five or six going through 10, 11, 12, being an artist wasn't really a career path. It was something that you do as a hobby and then you can do something proper like be a doctor or you know i was saying the only artist that was successful was like bob ross yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's the thing it was just it just wasn't seen as a a proper direction for a career so something i kind of pushed through and obviously went to school but as i said like we're talking about the reels i mean my road was not smooth you know i was um you know expelled from school so basically kicked out of school drug problem left home at 17 um you know, so I've kind of, I kind of, you know, went through two years from the ages of like 17 to 19, where basically messed my, messed myself up a little bit, you know, probably went through my, 
the troublesome teens for a bit too long and went too troublesome. Uh, yeah, got you know, not not, not the you know, the wrong crowd, not not blaming it on them at all, but I was a part of a, a bad crowd and we all did very silly, stupid things. Um so yeah, then I yeah, then I then I kind of woke up one day, you know, it's, it's, it's like kind of cliche, everybody says, Oh, you wake up one day, but I literally woke up one day and thought, what the fuck am I doing? You know, what what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? And that next day I walked to the the local college where I was um, and enrolled for like a, like what they call like an art foundation. So an art foundation is like a year's course where you do, um, you know, a bit of sculpture, a bit of fine art, uh, textiles and graphic design. I mean, I didn't even have a clue what graphic design was at that time. To be fair, I didn't even really know what my name was at that time, but that's, that's another story. Um, but yeah, and then just, yeah, just so went, so went through that year, um, and kind of, you know, enjoyed being creative again, found that as a good outlet for, you know, distracting myself from what I was doing to kind of doing something new and have putting in a routine and doing work and all the rest of it. Um, and then, yeah, at the end of that course, your kind of tutor comes up to you and has a chin wag and says, you know, so what, what do you, what, what, what have you enjoyed? What do you like? You know, I said, I always wanted to be a fine artist, you know what I mean? So, um, and he kind of said, look, you're, basically probably not good enough to be a fine artist because your style is very not fine arty you know and obviously you're like dude you can't tell me what to do but you know I actually ended up listening to him and he said look go into graphic design as I said look, it's something that I actually at the time never really thought about as a possible career choice and after that I signed up stayed on at that college and did like a like a HND which is like a national diploma so and then yeah so I did two-year graphic design degree there got that um, then I went to uni um, and did uh, communication design which is basically graphic design yeah, but they call it all thing. sorts of all sorts of weird and wonderful things um, uh, and yeah and then while I was there I decided to get um, an agency job so like a little junior design job um, and yeah that was you know, really, really open my eyes to the industry, you know, basically doing everything and being pretty shit at everything. But, that, you know, we've, we've all got to start off shit and that's the only way to get better, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I was doing web, you know, Photoshop work, um, you know, some web work, some a little bit of branding, lots of print stuff, going to meetings. And that, I said, that was really good to like, build confidence and, you know, get to know the industry and obviously make some mistakes that I didn't have to pay for, you know. Once you once you spell a once you spell a um, you know something wrong in a in a print magazine and then it comes back of your spelling mistake and you learn pretty quickly not to do that shit again. Been there um, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking, you know, it's all been. It's, as I said so that's basically. And then obviously, ten years ago, I started uh, kind of left the agency there. They were kind of dwindling down, and you know, me and my mate Ad started up Baby Giant ten years ago. He does. He does all the clever stuff. I do all the creative stuff. He does, I always say like he does all the stuff you, you don't see. I do all the stuff you do see. So he does all the development, web stuff, you know, keeps the company kind of on track, you know, accounts and all this kind of stuff. So you get the fun job. I do get the fun job, yes, um, which I thank him every day for. So, um, so yeah, and then that's kind of my story. And obviously just kind of, yeah, just waking up every day, still can't quite understand why people pay me to draw and you know so it's, it's all it's just kind of this really weird but so yeah so basically long story short it hasn't been a straight road but it's been my road I think that's the I think that's the way to look at it it's not straight road it's your road and I, I'm a big believer in just like blazing your own path and stop trying to like ride the the trends or the coattails of someone else's success yeah and I started looking back like dude I did a deep deep dive in your Instagram just to scroll to see like when did this shift of like this hand drawn crafted presentation lead into mm. like the final vectorized logo and like dude I was like scrolling back into like 2017s and like 2016s yeah. and you've been doing this shit for a hot yeah, I, minute this isn't anything yeah. new you know so like tell about like the process of finding your process and your presentation of what works for you and when did you start noticing like, hey, this works for me? And then also like an audience and yeah. clients started like resonating or being attracted by it. When did you start having that kind of like, aha, something's working here? Yeah, I mean, as again, it's all 
by total accident. You know, you chuck shit at a wall and you see what sticks and, you know, some of it doesn't stick and some of it does. Um, but as always, I mean, our drawing's always been a part of my process, but I think as a slightly less confident designer, which I was, you know, five, five, six years ago, you know, you're still kind of, you know, as I said, I was still doing everything, but, you know, the logo work was starting to kind of come in and, you know, people have always... You know, I think that the biggest thing that kind of changed the, my kind of thought pattern with it was I read um, Show Your Work by Austin, Austin Kleon. Kleon. Yeah. yeah, and it was that particular moment made me realise it was okay to share stuff. Um, and as I say, it was, it was, so any, anybody who hasn't read it, definitely read it as a creative, because it really did kind of make me, you know, simple things like share something small every day. You know, I was so worried about, you know, what if I share it, will people steal it? If I share it, will they copy it? If I share it, will they hate it? You know, I kind of managed to, I think it comes of age as well, kind of, you know, four or five years, you know, early 30s when I started to kind of start to properly share my process. So I was a bit better and okay with myself. You know, I'm, I kind of like who I am. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. I don't really care either way if you either way whatever you want to do it's kind Dude, of all that's right a but, hard thing to accept like that took me yeah. years to get to that point to accept my work's not for everyone yeah but it's also i mean i i used to hate myself do you know what i mean so it's yeah. it kind of it kind of made me realize that you know as soon as i can i put a lot of effort into making myself better and making myself a better human and helping helping other people and doing everything i could for my mum and dad because i let them down and i probably kind of overcompensate you know People are saying you should. You don't need to do this stuff anymore. So I'm happy to do it. I really want to do it because it makes weirdly, if it makes you happy, um, it's making me happy as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just kind of one of those. So yeah, the kind of process, kind of um, kind of started from that. I kind of there's loads of in, there's loads of designers on Instagram, but there's nobody really showing. There's, as in like logo designers, I should say. There's you know there's no there wasn't any real logo designers showing a lot of the process, and I thought that's actually kind of where all the cool stuff happens. That's where all the, you know, the mistakes happen, the fun ideas, the, the theory. And that's something like with my kind of design styles, I like to kind of chuck as, you know, show you so much, but I, well, I tell you so much, but show you so little in that kind of respect. Um, but, you know, I think it's cool to take people on that journey. You know, this is the reasoning behind it. This is the process I use. These are the failed concepts. These is where, this is where we end up. And, you know, and I also go like through the process of like showing my failed concepts and I talk openly about why they failed, you know, and the reasons why we ended up in this direction. Like, Cause I think it's, you know, but that, you know, I was kind of always told, you know, knowledge is only knowledge if it's shared. Do you know what I mean? So mm. and I, I'm a big believer in kind of, you know, not, you know, not like I used to in my mid twenties, hold everything back for the worry of people judging it or whatever. Now I just openly share everything. And I think that's probably helped me gain quite a lot of traction, especially on Instagram and starting to gain a little bit, you know, I've been on YouTube for, you know, a little, uh, just over a month now and all the rest of it. And that's kind of gaining traction as well. So it's kind of, yeah, all about just the kind of open, honest and real design process behind the kind of what's happening as you say like the kind of human side to it and you know I'm not just uh you know you know I don't like to just kind of show you this and then kind of run away I kind of want you to understand why I've done what I've done and funnily enough you know my clients they kind of come to me and they're like your logo design's great but we want your sketches <laughs> Do you know what I mean it's kind of you know they love that I think when, especially when it comes to drawing, and you'll know this just as much as I, you know, there you get that there's an emotional attachment that people can can grasp with it. You know, something that's handmade, and you know, they, they, there's obviously there's you can get so much more um, human in a drawing than you can on a you know a you know in Illustrator just running in there and just ch chucking out a Straight load of stuff. Straight vector cleanness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's kind of. I mean, probably I've you know. I wouldn't say I'll go to, I mean, 80% of my process is sketches. I could probably save a lot of time and do 40% and then run into, you know, um, to Illustrator. But I really enjoy drawing. And I think that's, you know, I love, I love the art of drawing. I love, you know, the idea that I'm sitting here drawing, listening to music, enjoying myself, and I'm getting paid to do this. Um, and it's kind of, I suppose, with the Instagram growth happening, I've kind of tailored 
my kind of process slightly. So I always draw in like square, in square boxes, in, in imaginary square boxes, because I know I'm going to be sharing it on Instagram. So, you know, so it's you kind of... Every to the, you tailor your process to the platform. Uh, exactly exactly what I've done. your process. Interesting. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's been a really... Yeah, because people, some a lot of people would sometimes think, you know, oh, he just does that for Instagram. And I do all this for my clients, but I just get to share it on Instagram. It's and just that's, a, <laughs> that's a repurposed way of being able to share your work. It, that's exactly yeah. what it is. And, you know, I take pictures all, all the way through my process. Um, so of my, like, you know, I've got, like, like here, you know, I've kind of got, like, super quick doodles and, like, you know, that kind of, this is the really rough, also you can't see. Yeah, you know, the can really see it now. Oh, of, yeah really kind of rough stage stuff and then I go into the bigger sketchbook and develop more then I go for this word mapping thing and I make sure all of my kind of thoughts align and I develop 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 I mean I, I did a tattoo apprenticeship as well so that's a, a total segue there I know that's a bit of a crazy one but I, that, I, I think I, I love that you you there's not a distinct you're either an artist or you're a designer like yeah. I, I think there's a, a, a massive overlap between the two i come from like tattoo cultures where my art yeah. was inspired from from that ink feel i think that's what attracted yeah. me to you but i just don't yeah. go heavy into the design side like i used to be logos but you know yeah. like talk about that you don't have to be just one or the other you were born artists like i i took uh fine art classes too and i thought yeah. like i had to do design in order to not be a starting artist so it's like i kind of had that same yeah you know path you know like what if someone is stuck feeling like they have to be an artist or they have to be a designer what would you speak towards toward that I would I would say that some of the best designers are artists. I think yeah, I think I think you're right. I think we're all, you know, I mean it, it depends on I mean it depends what you kind of people kind of classify art as, you know, masterpieces. Do you know what I mean? I've I kind of did Fine this thing oil with, paintings and exactly the yeah, art and traditional all history kind of, and I don't exactly. understand all of that. Art, art, art's more of a more more for me is a kind of way of thinking, you know, rather than a, rather than um, you know, something practical or tangible. It's a way of um, li living your life. It's a way of, you know, you look at things slightly differently. You think of stuff that other people sometimes don't think about. You see stuff that other people don't see. Um, you know, you look up at the clouds right now. You know, there's none here. I'm in the room. But, you know, if you see something in the clouds, you know, you're, you're pretty much an artist, I would say. Um, and I think that's... I think art's for I think art's so open as well. Art is for everybody. You don't have to be, you know, you know, you don't have to be like people have got this perception, like especially when it comes to drawing, that drawing has to be good. You know, drawing drawing is not it doesn't have to be good. You know, you can be a rubbish drawer, but I don't think there is such a thing as a rubbish drawer, if that makes sense. Um, I think it's all about just a process, you know, it's a process of getting ideas down, it's a process of learning a process of thinking and I think you know anybody who I think anybody can be an artist if that I think that's kind of where I'm going with it you know but it takes time to kind of hone those skills down to be applicable within your industry so if you are obviously a you know a logo designer for example you are an artist you know you think like an artist um, and the way and your process is very art wise and there is you know you can make money you know, if I can make money, anybody can bloody make money. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's a big, I see a lot of, you know, younger designers and I chat to a lot of them and try and help them online. And they're so worried about this kind of comparison thing. You know, there's like people who have been in the design industry for like one or two years comparing themselves to people who have been in it for 15, 20 years. You know, that's, that's just, you know, you've got to, I think that's a very dangerous thing. And obviously, you know, this social media world facilitates that somewhat because people, you know, I was luckily enough, like probably like yourself, kind of grew up in the design industry without Instagram. You know, Instagram wasn't even like an idea when I first started. Um, and I think that's really kind of helped me realize that there's a, there's a bigger picture behind the Instagram. And I think a lot of people do probably think Instagram is the way to make money. You know, it's a great like side hustle we'll just have to drop that in there for like the kind of um yeah it's a great way to kind of build an audience and build a following and engage in the in the right community but i think so many people try and build the audience before even building a business or building their personality or building their knowledge and i think that's i think that's just the way the world is now but yeah so i'm i'm just pretty fucking lucky i grew up 
you know, without it, because it's helped me. You know, I was already established designer. I was already had an established kind of business platform, I suppose. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I don't know if that even answered the question. I went off on a right tangent there. <laughs> no, I think there's a lot of value baked into it. Um, my homie, Michael Fugoso, you know, Fug Strader by oh, chance? Oh, fucks. I was, I was drinking in London with him. Like, Dude, Fugs is, is the man. I love Fugs. Um, yeah. But he said something that just captivated me and, and how he terms, uh, how he approaches things is like, you know, think like an artist, but execute like a designer. So yeah. I think there's a lot of beauty in that. Like you can still create work that's truly for you. Yeah. You know, that speaks to yourself that you connect with, but at the same time, how you position it and share it is like acting like it, you're a designer. Like who's this for? What's in it for someone else? Why should someone yeah. else care? You know? So it's the beauty of, you know, your art's still for you, but you can position it to attract that audience. As long as the end of the day, it's truly still you. You know, oh, instead of some fake shit yeah. just to try and like catch a feature or yeah. I start seeing the made by James uh, look and feel the people's work now too. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I have, I do see that as well, but uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, I, I kind of find it um, kind of a bit of both, you know, I kind of, I, I love the fact that people, you know, want to kind of, you know, not necessarily emulate me. Because I think, I think that's a, this a bit is a, of a again, mimic. Yeah, it's a kind of a bit of a mimic. But at the end of the day, I kind of, you know, am I inspiring them to do, to actually get up and draw and do some work? That's, that's freaking great. But as you say, I think like finding your own style and voice is that, is your superpower. Because once you figure that out, um, you know, your life becomes super, the, the clarity happens, you know, you're kind of, you know, you just get super, super focused. Um, and I think, you know, as you say, I think there are, you know, with the likes of YouTube and Skillshares and like learning from other designers, it's, you know, it's inevitable that there's going to be some people that kind of start creating stuff like the, like the people that they're watching. So um, I think that's just a bound to happen. I think also with age, you I think I think it's more than you're more than welcome when you're younger to kind of explore you know emulate and kind of you know um seek inspiration from you know your the people that you look up to but I think it's also a great way of um you know I think it's also super important to figure out your own style because yeah you don't want people going yeah, like you said, you know, got the kind of emul, you know, the kind of copycat kind like of. Like I see a lot of, of made by James in your work, or you know, yeah, Scotty, yeah, exactly. A lot, a lot of, of Scotty Russell in your work, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, well, and I think that's an important thing you said. It's your super uh, superpower when you find your voice and style. If you see me looking down or something, I'm taking notes. Um, yeah, I saw you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't want you to think I'm like texting. Check out nah. my Instagram. Let me nah. scroll real quick. Yeah, this guy's fucking boring. Yeah, <laughs> this shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Definitely not yeah. the case. So I don't want people watching video ever thinking that. But yeah, would you say? I wouldn't say finding your voice and style is a destination. I feel like it's a constant process, and I feel like yeah. you're now taking finding this next new level of your style and voice. It's not necessarily just um logos like sketches of logos and polished logos on your feet anymore your next evolution is showing your face more and the more personal brand side of yeah. things and getting into like youtube and more educating you know this yeah. isn't necessarily geared towards clients now you're educating your audience and your followers yeah. giving people what they want like talk about this new transition that you're in of finding your voice mm. and finding yeah. this new style for you and, and and i guess injecting steroids into your already popular style you know, yeah, your I suppose it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't, it's, as again, it's kind of it's exactly like you said. My process and me, I, and as a human, I'm constantly evolving and allowing myself to to go where I'm not. I don't particularly set goals. You know, I'm not a big goal setter. Um, I'm more of a kind of productive. Just wake up. You know, have good habits. You know, nail your process be good to people and see where you kind of go. You know, I don't think too far ahead. I kind of concentrate. Yeah. I I'm kind like, of concentrate. I'm a goal setter and like a target setter, but also yeah. I'm very aligned to the routine and not being a shitty human thing. And, yeah. And it just goes to show like, I mean, that's the I, beautiful thing. I believe, yeah. I, I believe a lot of people cannot show up and just wing it each day without a plan. 
I, I truly oh, yeah. believe most people can't do that. There's a couple of unicorns yeah. out there, especially people doing it outside of a day job, like yeah. trying to side hustle outside a day job and you don't know what you're working towards and you want to do yeah. your thing full time. I think you're setting yourself up for defeat, but I would love to hear more um, about like that for you. You know, you just kind of yeah. show up and. Well, I mean, I've, yeah, so this is, yeah, this is my, I'm definitely not winging it. I hope, um, okay. <laughs> but, you know, my, you know, I obviously, when I say goals, I don't kind of go, I want to earn a million pound by this time next year. I want to have, you know, 25 students and mentoring every single month. I don't set these. I know, I know the kind of person I am. I know who I want to be. And I put, I put in the right process and habits to, be able to facilitate that change if it ever happens. Do you know what I mean? Because I think the problem with goals is, is once you, once you get to them, you make a new one, or if you fail, you get down. You know, my process is more about, you know, set, as I say, setting up the right processes, getting a good routine, you know, being busy every day, you know, always pushing forward, even if it's like, you know, a little bit, as long as I'm always progressing, you know, I'm happy. And I think, I think, as I said, I think it's, I think sometimes people, I mean, I totally understand, you know, the goals, you know, having like a mission sheet and, you know, by the end of the year, I want to have X, I want to have this, I want to have this, I want to have, I totally get that. But my theory is that if I do my job the way I want to do it, the way, do it properly, show up every day, even sometimes when I don't want to bust my balls, you know, work hard, everything that is going to happen is going to happen. You yeah. know, it's a, it's inevitable. You know, I think yeah, Whatever. I think we're very aligned. You just word it and articulate it in a different way, for sure. Yeah. I I love it. And, and yeah. not, there's not one set way of let's get to work. Like your process isn't gonna work for everyone. There's some people who only no. believe in one concept. You know, yeah. and yours is way different. You got to find again. The road's not straight, but no. you got to find your own road. Yeah, because I don't. I mean, who has a fucking clue what's gonna happen in a in another year? You know, my my life could flip turn upside down. You could I don't be a want YouTube to... celebrity instead next year. You know, <laughs> <I thought this laughs> no, definitely <laughs> not. That might take a little bit of time. But that's the thing for me is I'm happy to give shit time. I think people are so Ooh. so so quick to if it's not working now, I'm going to pivot and do something else. Or oh, this isn't working, I'm going to pivot and do something else. Where I'm a big believer in you know things are worth waiting for. Things are worth you know, putting your time and effort into, you know, Baby Giant, I made pretty much sod all for like the first, you know, two years. Didn't really make a huge amount of money for, you know, uh, the first five years. You know, we got by, but we weren't kind of raking it in. But now year 10, things are extremely comfortable. But that, that's taken time. That's taken effort. And, you know, I always knew it would happen. I just, if I showed up every single day, did my job properly, everything I put out into the world was you know, as good as I physically could make it, you know, things will change, you know, and I'm a big believer in that, you know, because as I said, like this time next year, say if I set a load of goals within the design industry and this crazy opportunity kind of, I mean, I'm always going to be a designer. I'm just kind of spitballing shit here to be fair. But, you know, what happens when some an opportunity comes that doesn't align with those goals? Do you abandon it because it's not in your path or do you allow yourself the opportunity to be able to go and grab it you know so that's kind of where as I say I'm a very driven person I know exactly who I want to be and where I want to be in the future but I don't put any time like I know it will just happen if I See, show up every single day that's dope and I'm not one who's going to be like you have to say like set in stone long-term yeah. and short-term i'm a big believer of having your targets that could be moving and then yeah. flexibility within it because we constantly yeah. evolve as people and things change like mm. i thought i i thought my vision was in order to get clout and respect from my peers i had to be like a full-time freelancer with big time brands and that was like if i yeah. kept on that road i wouldn't be doing what i do today yeah. and like my passion of coaching and podcasting like yeah. You know, like I, I like and you're freaking be, good at it. Exactly. Well, thank <laughs> yeah. you, sir. Thank you, That's sir. Right. But uh, I, I like that flexibility part, and I love the fact, like, I'm all about the slow and steady grind. I don't teach yeah. shit happens overnight. Like everything I've Not done nothing. has been a slow yeah. and steady grind. Outside of day yeah. job, family, cr just just life in general. Yeah. And I love how you give it time because things are worth waiting for. But we live in this microwave culture that if you showed up for 30 days. And your Instagram didn't pop off and your logo 
daily challenge didn't take off, then yeah. you're considered a failure and it's time to pivot and find what's next. Like people yeah. are scared to give things time because they feel like they're wasting time when. Yeah, I think, I think it's such a, I mean, I said this kind of, kind of the hustle culture, yeah, this quick, the quick buck culture, I think is, you know, we probably, well, we probably grew up pretty similarly, you know, I was told that shit takes time, you know, yeah. it's difficult to get people to give you money, you know, you, you got to earn their trust, you know, and I think there's a lot of this, you know, especially with, you know, people get into 100,000 followers in six months because of using this particular Instagram and they, and they teach yeah. the heck like yeah, how exactly. I grew over a yeah. hundred thousand. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, Maybe there's some value great. in it, but it's like a, yeah. it's a clickbait headline. Exactly. And fix. I think, exactly. And I think people are so, I think people are not, I don't, this, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to kind of, I never like to diss anybody. I just like to do my own thing. Let this is more observations. Yeah. Observations, you know, it's like, Everybody wants to be famous overnight, you know. Every well, a everybody wants to be famous, um, you know, which is crazy because I guarantee if you go and speak to twenty famous people, they fucking hate it. So, <laughs> you know, they would much prefer a slightly quieter life and you know an easier life. But obviously, doing what they're doing, that, that does obviously happen. But the the quick fix, you know, I see people get into ten thousand, twenty thousand followers, and then they're suddenly like, you know, buy my course. Um, you know, doing this or doing that. And I think there's nothing wrong with that, I'm saying, but I think people are just so quickly to try and monetize something. And I've, that's what, you know, I'm not saying that my way is the right way of doing it, but, you know, I've always thought, you know, I'm not comfortable. Like, for example, I could have gone on to Skillshare. I could have made some money from that. But I thought, you know what? I want this video shit that I'm going to be doing to be fun. You know, I don't want to put pressure on myself to... Um, have to create an hour long tutorial, you know, have it properly scripted, you know, and I also, I basically want people at the moment to be able to engage with my content, whether they've got money or not. I don't like this, you know, um, you know, this kind of, if you can afford me, you can have me kind of thing, you know, so, so basically this is just my journey. I want people to be able to, you know, email me. I mean, it's, I mean, I spend, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I spend hours, hours and hours every week replying to emails, replying to DMs. Dude, it's hard, I, man. I, it's, it's, I mean, you do it as well, I imagine. And it is, it I'm is behind right by now. Itself. I, admittedly, <laughs> I'm behind yeah. with the whole baby yeah. thing coming up. Like, dude, I'm yeah. buried and I feel bad and I will get back to everyone when I yeah. can. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing But like, you're a good human. You make time for other people. Um, and I think that's, I think that's something that I, you know, I kind of want to be that kind. I want to be the person that I never had growing up within the design industry. I want people to be able to be, ask me a quick question. Oh, what do you think of my logo? Is there anything you change? And I can give them a quick DM and just give them a little bit of guidance, you know, all free, no, no charge. And, you know, I want to kind of make the designers of the future feel that when they're in a place of, you know, you know, when there's people looking up to them, they're like, well, you know, this dude helped me. I'm going to help them because I think it kind of, you know, as I say, facilitates a, a much nicer community. And our, our community is freaking great, but you know, there is there is a kind of vicious side to it as well, where you know, creatives start to hate on other creators. And I'm like, well, what, dude? Like, what is going it's on? Toxic. I mean, can't it is? It's, and it's difficult to kind of watch sometimes. You're just sitting there. You know, I have people, I mean, I'm big enough and ugly enough and don't give enough of a fuck to worry about some stuff. You know, people will jump on my feed, go, it's shit, and then run away. They don't even follow me. You know, they, I don't even know in. them. Yeah, exactly. And you just think, I don't understand, like, the kind of, what, what, what is this achieving? I mean, overall, like, 90, 90, 99% of, you know, people that follow me on Instagram and I interact with are, are awesome. But that I can definitely see this kind of, there's this kind of slightly underground undertone of negativity that is starting to happen. And I, I, I kind of want to be a source of positivity within the community to kind of counteract it a bit. And, you know, I say give people, the, you know, some people don't have any money. Some people are young. Some people are in different countries and they can't fucking eat, you know. So you know, my theory is if I can invest in myself, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still creating content. That's what I like to do. Um, 
I don't charge for it, so it allows me that if you don't like it, well, sod it, mate. You know, you haven't paid for it, so you know, let, well, just enjoy it. It's free, um, and it's kind of that's kind of where my journey is at the moment. Is just trying to give as much as I can for for not a lot. I mean, obviously, in the future, if I create, you know, some crazy ass, crazy ass videos or some proper cool. I might do some mentoring, you know, which will obviously need to be paid. But at this kind of stage where I'm kind of learning myself, you know, I'm quite happy just to do some free mentoring, which I'm doing at the moment, do free YouTube videos, do do show all my process on thingy because, you know, you know, money for me doesn't make you rich. You know, I what makes me rich is people saying, you've inspired me. I was feeling down the other day and you've inspired me to start drawing again. You know, oh, I got my first job because of what you said on your Instagram and your process and that that kind of stuff. You know, if that could make pay for my food, you know, I would fucking love that. Um, That's way so, more fulfilling. Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, why I, love I it. didn't yeah. chase the freelance because the coaching yeah. and the podcast just it's so cool fills that fulfillment bucket. Yeah, way fuller, a full fulfillment bucket. Um, a, fu- a full fulfillment bucket. <laughs> I cannot say that, but you did very well. Yeah. No, that's no, I think that's why what attracted me to someone like you and like the Tom Rosses in the world, it's not snaky. Like I have to sell to put food on my table, but I sell what I believe in and that I have experience in doing. And I still have free stuff like the podcast and my content on Instagram, whatever. Like I have to sell to survive. But at the same time, like I truly believe in serving people and being that positive source, you know, equipping other creatives with. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, a sharpened mental mindset so they can show up and get their, their own breakthrough, you know, you know, yeah. and, and not fail and I guess play victim to the comparison trap. Like I did for so long, you know, yeah. exactly like you're doing. Like, yeah. Let me help you get out of your own way so you can find your own path is what yeah. I'm trying and to I say. Think, I think the word you said there was experience. You know, I think that's the big thing. I mean, you've been there, done it, got all the fucking t-shirts, you know, and now you're at a time where, you, you know, you know, you know, you, what you're doing and what you're selling is something that you believe in and you own it. And I think that's the other thing is that people are trying to be the new Scotty Russells without the experience. You know, they just want that quick buck. You know, there's people downloading shit from, you know, other designers and putting their name on it and selling it, you know, people stealing other people's illustrations and putting it on t-shirts you see it all over the place you know these are this is the this is the problem within the industry and i think there are too many people as i say like looking for that quick buck happy to rip the shit out of people um whereas you you know you are following your passion and obviously allowing others to find their passion and make money out of their passion you know how that's the, probably the most rewarding thing on the planet um so yeah kudos to you kudos to you Appreciate it, man. But um, before we dive into rapid fire section, I, I guess I kind of want to know what's one piece of advice you'd give yourself when you were just starting off as a logo designer. I know other people are out there wanting to pursue this yeah. path and they just get tripped up. Of How do I even start? Yeah. Uh, phew, that's a good question. What would I, what Where advice would I, up? <laughs> yeah, I fucked up a lot. Um, I suppose, um, what would it be? I mean, I'd allow myself to be wrong more. Um, I think that was the biggest thing. I kept on trying to be perfect. And even when I was shit, I tried to be perfect, if that makes sense. And I think, I think you've got to allow yourself to be, sh- allow yourself to be shit and know that you're going to get better. Um, Cause I think that's what a lot of people do is they think I'm shit. Stop. Do you know what I mean? But it's, you've got to just kind of push through the shit uh, because you know, on the other side of that, you know, every single day, you know, people talk about my drawing and stuff. And I, I draw and have drawn every single day for almost 15 years. My drawing is going to be slightly better than somebody who draws time. once or twice a year. It exactly. took time and you posted a lot yeah. of turds to get yeah. to the gold. Exactly. Yeah. And created a lot of turds. You know, I looked back at some of the logos I did circa 10 years ago and I think, holy fuck. <laughs> I, I need to phone them up and give them a new one now because that is crap. Um, but you know, but that shows progress. Like that's exa- the reason I mean, that's, you post turds so you can spot out those tur- those, those polished turds like ten years from now and be like, damn, exactly. look at the growth. Exactly, and I think that's I think that's the thing is, yeah, I would just yeah, especially like if I could give myself some advice would be to take your time and allow yourself to be shit uh, because you will be. 
Because I think I think that's what people are, as I said, they you're not great overnight, you're not good overnight, you're not average overnight, you know, you're you're pretty shit for a long time. But then suddenly it clicks, you know, your process starts to click, your execution starts to click, you figure out what works, what doesn't work. And then, you know, I'm still, as I said, 10 years, 15, 15 plus years in the design, 10 years of Baby Giant, and my process is still evolving. I'm still figuring out cleaner, better ways, better tools, you know, of, to, to help me execute my stuff better. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah, give yourself that time and allow yourself to be shit. Um, is what I would say to myself. Ben, no. <laughs> and plus, stop being a twat. That's probably stop that's being else a twat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, is it like a, a niche and a niche thing, like it is here, or is it for you? Is it a, a, a twat versus a twat? A twat. <laughs> yeah. Niche, niche, and niching. Um, and I think twat it's like, and twats. <laughs> twat and twats. Yeah. But I think because you guys say aluminum, don't you? Aluminum, yeah, aluminium. Yeah, we, yeah aluminium, yeah. Like, where yeah, the fuck I mean, is aluminium coming from? What like, the fuck is aluminium? <laughs> you do remember you're speaking English, don't you? Right, and then like the S's to the Z's and vice versa. Oh, but yeah, I'm not like, silent like, P's. Yeah. I didn't even know people said niche. Cause like in the Midwest of Meyer, it's niche. Everybody says yeah. niche. And then I started having people on the podcast. Everybody's saying niche. And then Gary V starts saying niche. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Like, it sounds so like hoity toity and proper stick your pinky out when you drink stuff. Yeah. And, I should like, have had my cup of Earl Grey with me here. Actually, yeah. it's, too, it's too freaking <laughs> hot outside. It's like so yeah, so it's here, so twat to you. It's twat to me. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wow. Stop being a twat. Tangents. <laughs> Tangents. Yeah. Love yeah. it though. I love it. Okay. <laughs> you can't be too serious all the time. Oh, no. Why? All right. Boring. Rapid fire. If you were on death row, what would your last slice of pizza be? Oh, a meat. No, it would have been a meat feast, but I've gone vegan. See how quickly I went back to meat then. But you're on <laughs> death row. Oh, I'm on death row. So yeah. You can break um, whatever, you know, do you know what? I probably, I stuff. probably would be go for like some sort of dab, double pepperoni with jalapenos. That is, oh, and a bit of a garlic dip if I'm allowed a dip. That would be it's, my. It's your world. It's you're dying here. This is your last yeah. wish. So I would ask for a big, big pot of garlic, mayo, and yeah, double pepperoni with jalapenos and maybe a little bit of chili oil. I like I like shit hot. Fuck, Ooh. this is way specific. So man, I, I can see it in your eyes. You missed this. Yeah. Why? Why'd you make the switch to vegan? If you don't mind me asking. Just um, my wife's my wife's vegan, um, and I realised that well, she's she does all the cooking. She's a great great cook, chef, whatever you want to call it. And I kind of found that, you know, I used to eat meat like twice, twice a day, every day. Um, and it was just, it wasn't even a kind of conscious decision. It was just like, you know, I'll, Kate would cook, you know, and, you know, I just wouldn't have meat. And then I had meat less and then I have meat less. I mean, sometimes I do fall off the wagon. I'm not going to say I'm a, a fully based, fully, fully hardcore vegan. I would like to say I'm kind of more plant based. So maybe I, I might kind of, you know, if I'm going to go to a mate's house or something, you know, and they cook for me, I'm not going to say, I can't eat that. You know, I'll eat it. Do you know what I mean? But you notice like I'm the at, health benefits and stuff from it? Have you noticed oh, a change in yourself? Well, yeah, I do. I do feel a lot um, uh, kind of fresher. Um, you know, and my turds don't smell as much, which is always a which is always a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like pooping yeah. out turnips or something like that. Yeah, exactly. It smells <laughs> fresh. <Yeah. laughs> my wife doesn't get mad anymore. I don't need to buy bathroom no, spray. Exactly. So no, many health so, benefits. Oh, no, I've, exactly. I've, I've always kind of like thought of entertaining the idea of just like switching things up. Yeah, in my life again, it's totally, totally random. But yeah, I know a lot of other people around here are getting some benefits from that. But uh, yeah. I, we digress. This is rapid fire. Come on, Scott. Yeah, sorry. If you yeah. could have lunch with one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Uh, it would be Ricky Gervais. Okay. Because because I just I uh, I just watch a lot of his stuff and he's hilarious. I, I think I think he's a genius, and I would just want to just have a chat with him because I, I think he seems like quite a nice guy as well. So, um, yeah, I just listened to all of his stuff. So, um, yeah, it's a weird one, but yeah, that would be my kind of go to flavor, man. Okay. If you were reincarnated, what would your new career path be outside of like artist, designer, logo maker? I love to be a professional sportsman. Um, I did a lot of sport when I was younger, but which one uh, would you play? I played, uh, had England cricket trials. I had, uh, I was county rugby, county cricket, 
Um, so I'd probably go for rugby. I was never big on football or anything like that. Um, like soccer, football, or American no, football? As in football, as in soccer. Football. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was never very good. I was good at it, but I did, never really kind of pursued it. But uh, yeah, I think I'd probably want to be a because I like as a kind of basically freelancer. You know, basically I'm in the office and AD's kind of over. Obviously, we can't see each other, so it's quite an individual thing. This kind of designer thing and I loved that kind of team um sports you know we're Same. in it together and I think that is the one thing I, I mean I still play cricket for like the local village and stuff like that which is cool but obviously that's cancelled this summer um but yeah I'd love to be that would probably be where I would go is try and yeah be that professional team player I think that'd be quite cool I, I got mad respect for the athlete designer because like I was an athlete first before you know I ever claimed I was an artist so definitely dig it awesome uh, most important question do you believe in aliens or other life forms existing outside of our solar system i think you'd be a fool not to i think it's quite an arrogant thought to think that we're the only things <laughs> in this universe or the all the other in space is pretty fucking big um so um i think you'd be a fool not to think there's something else out there personally i dig it I yeah. dig it. You know, and if someone doesn't agree, that's fine. But like, you definitely get some cool points if you, you know, if, if you <laughs> answered my biased opinion about this. Yeah. Question, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's definitely something we're not, we're, yeah. Yeah. I totally believe in it. Okay. And last one where can people go to follow you online and support you? Um, so, Made by James on YouTube, uh, Made by James on Instagram, and then I've got my Made by James website, www.madebyjames.co. Um, and yeah, that is all the places. Um, and I've got I, a cool. I know little, you just um, dropped a freebie, right? Your logo black book. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. I got a chance so, to code that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you basically, it's kind of like my newsletter, but within that, once you sign up and stuff, I've got loads of free assets to kind of help you become like a badass logo designer. So, if you type in um, yeah, www.logoblackbook.com, it will shoot you straight there. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to be like an ever expanding place of goodness. So, I'll probably every month be dropping in some new guides to kind of help you you know become become super cool and your own your own badass logo designer so um yeah that's a that's a pretty fun place that's all brand new for me as well all this kind of stuff the whole email yeah, marketing so, side tommy yeah, boy that, tom ross yeah, working that with is that so that is that tommy ross that's, who's that's been tommy uh, breaking ross my neck me too man <laughs> yeah, yeah. we love we love tom ross oh, here, uh, so, tommy, uh, tom, tom has become a really good friend of mine and um he stupidly gave me gave me his mobile number as well, so I constantly just send him stuff. I <laughs> just annoy you on WhatsApp. Uh, no, on um, uh, yeah. Well, I'm on WhatsApp, yeah. So yeah, um, but yeah, he's um, but yeah, he is he's helped me a, a, a ton, and he is such an open, humble, and honest dude. And if anybody doesn't go and follow Tom Ross, you you're crazy. Crazy. He's, he's the reason he's, why I'm a side hustle coach. So uh, he's it was he's so the gross why for me to even say. Yeah, I mean, he is just, um, yeah, he's a, he's a great, great human. But, um, yeah, thanks, Tom. Right. Thanks, Tom. We love you here, Tom. <laughs> thanks, Tom. We love you, Tom. All right, all right, James. Well, it's been a pleasure. I feel like I've already known you for years yeah, right crazy, now. So, uh, man, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure. We will definitely get a round two going. I'll get you on Instagram Live, whatever I can do to bring you some value to. Uh, don't hesitate to ask me. And let's just stay in touch, all right? A hundred percent. And make sure that that wife has a beautiful baby tomorrow, possibly. <laughs> I mean, it's got my DNA in it. So yeah, it's going to be pretty. Out, by the time this comes out, baby will have arrived safe and sound, healthy mom, healthy baby. My wife's a badass. All it's right. It's going to be I'll, awesome. I'll keep in touch with you, homie. Peace. Cheers, buddy. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.